listening now. She the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy womb. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter riseth up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So, today is a holy day. If you find yourself wake up this morning and you're in a bad mood, you have the damn devil on you. So, every time the Sabbath comes, any holy day comes, you're supposed to be joyous. If you woke up feeling sorry, feeling sad, feeling mad, you got the devil on you. So it's just a quick scripture to always check your spirit on the Lord's day. Um, let's get into the class. Uh, Matthew 10, verse 34. The name of the class is Men's Foes. Men's Foes. We're going to start with Matthew 10, uh, verse 34. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So the misconception that we have coming from the Christian churches is that the Most High God sent Christ to bring peace on earth. But that's not true. Most High God sent Christ to bring a sword. What is a sword used for? For war. You understand? So there's a, there's a misconception that we have in our head from the Christian church that the Bible totally go against. Read verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So we understand that Esau is the enemy. All the other nations, they're going to go to captivity, right? Because why? They put their hand on dad's, um, on dad's children. However, there's one enemy, majority of the time, we fail to pay attention to, which is our own household. So, this is a house. We are a family. So there's going to be enemies among us as well. In your own personal nuclear um, house, your nuclear family, there's going to be enemies in there as well. That's what the scriptures say. The battle that we're going to go through, majority of the time is going to happen amongst family members. Okay, so give me James 4 and 1. Because we got to understand that the other enemy, which is the other nation, their fate is already sealed. So let's not worry too much about them. Let's focus more on our internal problems. Because that's the only way we're going to be able to get some healing. Read the book of James chapter 4 and verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? So where does war come from? Where does bickering and arguing and fighting come from? It comes from the lust that's within you. Like when you look at Adam and Eve, where did the problem start? With Eve lusting after his powers. So it was easy for the devil to beguile Eve. So the war that comes, if I'm fighting against you, then there's something in me that's provoking me to fight against you. Because if I'm walking in the law, statutes, and commandments, and you walk in the law, statutes, and commandments, are we going to have fights? Yes, sir. That's why Moses said, I wish all Israel were prophets. Because if we are all prophets, we ain't going to have no problem. We're going to know exactly how to walk according to the law, statutes, and commandments. So whenever there's war and bickering and fighting, then somebody or both parties are not walking in the spirit. There's a lust that you're yearning to satisfy, and that causes um, you to fight amongst each other. Um, jump to verse 5. Verse 5. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? So, this verse is not written in vain. There's something in us that's always lusting to envy. We get envious of position. We get envious of a, somebody driving a better car. Sisters get envious because the other sister got a better head wrap than her. Something as simple as that. So that spirit that's within us, we have to learn to conquer it, otherwise it's gonna conquer us. Read it again. 
Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? So we have to overcome that spirit that's lusting to envy. Because that's not a good spirit. That spirit caused every single problem. Because why? You have problem within yourself that you can't overcome, so you take it out on other people. So the healing got to start from you first. Jump to verse 7. Verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So your flesh, fight the flesh. Because that's, that's the only means the devil has to get to you. Because if your spirit is right, then the devil cannot get to you. You understand? So resist the devil and he will flee from you. How do you resist something? To put up a fight. Because if I say I resisted the burglar that was coming into my house, what did I do? I put up a fight. So nothing goes away on its own. There's no problem that's going to solve itself. If you want the problem to be solved, you have to solve it. Um, go to James chapter 3 verse uh, 10. The book of James chapter 3 and verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. So you can't from your mouth bless and then curse at the same time. That's not right. Like one of the brothers said in a class before, here we are every day. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Um, who can tell me what the shalom means? Brother Yohanna, go ahead. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. So, how can you say shalom, peace be with you, but yet you have hatred in your heart for me? Or for your brother, or for your sister? Out of the same mouth proceed what? My brethren, these are not to, oh, excuse me, verse 10, out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things are not so to be. So if we walk in a spirit that shouldn't be, we can't be shaloming, peacing everybody, but yet hatred is in your heart. That's totally contrary to the Bible. Um, go to um, Romans 12 verse 9. We have to watch those, we have to watch ourselves. We have to keep our spirit under check, under control. Because we can't be fake among each other. Read the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which uh, pull is up, evil. Look up uh, dissimulation. Dissimulation. Let love be what? Without dissimulation. Read. Abhor that which is evil cleave to that which is good. So we must abhor what's, it, what's evil and cleave to what's good. Let's see what the um, dissimulation, what is the meaning of dissimulation? The definition of dissimulation. Concealment of one's thoughts, feelings, or character. Pretense. Read the synonyms. Synonyms. Pretense. Dissembling. Deceit. Dishonesty. Duplicity. Lying, guile, subter subterfuge, feigning, shaming, faking, bluff, bluffing, posturing, hypocrisy. So the scripture is saying we shouldn't be loving with being dishonest, being fake, being full of deceit. So basically your love is not real. You do it in a pretense. It shouldn't be so in the Mosaic house. We have to overcome that spirit. Read. Read it again. The book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Go to Micah 7. So we must abhor what's evil. Because if we both abhor what's evil, then guess what? There ain't going to be no fakeness among us. We're going to be real to one another. Read. Micah 7 verse 5. The book of Micah chapter 7 and verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. So the scripture, the scripture wants you not to put your faith in a friend or trust in a friend. Our trust must be in what? 
in the scriptures. So I'm going to trust you for as long as you're walking according to the law, statutes, and commandments. The moment you veer off from it, I cannot trust you because you're not showing yourself to have good patterns. Because your love is, is fake. It's not real. So our friendship, this is the glue that binds us. We would not know each other if it wasn't for this Bible. It's very simple. So that's the glue that binds us. For as long as you're walking according to these the Lord's statutes and commandments, yes, trust can be established. Read, um, read it again. The book of Micah, chapter 7, and verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. So your guide is your leaders. You should only put confidence in your leaders if they are walking according to the Lord's statutes and commandments. Because you know they're not going to guide you in the wrong direction. But the moment your guide starts going off its own um, thinking, then that guide is misleading you. Because he's supposed to speak like the oracles of God. Scriptures are supposed to be coming out. That's what you trust, the scriptures. Read the second part. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. So even the woman that lay next to you, be very careful what you choose to speak to her about. Because she could use all that against you to destroy you. That's scriptural. So if you don't want to follow what's written there, that's your problem. So when you fall, you have nobody else to blame but you. Read it again. The book of Micah, chapter 7 and verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Read. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. That's what we read in Matthew 10. Your enemy is going to be those of your own household. So don't give anybody in your house power over you. Walk circumspect. Keep the laws for real. Not in dissimulation. Then nobody will have power over you. Be very wary of the people that's in your house. Be very wary of the people that's in your family. Because your true enemies are those that's in your household. Why? Because the devil knows you have a weak spot for them. You understand? Watch any movies. Anytime they wanted to take somebody down, they always send what? A spy. To infiltrate, to become a good friend, to establish trust. And once trust is established, then you get taken down. So you got to be very wary of the people that are close to you. Especially in this truth, because this is the greatest movement that's happening on God's given earth. Don't think for one second everybody that's in the truth is a brother. Watch any movement that ever happened in the 60s. They all got infiltrated by agents and got taken down. So be careful how you deal with brothers. Scripture. Scripture, scripture. Keep it biblical. Um, give me Jeremiah 9 and 4. So your foes are going to be in your own household. So even among you, amongst ourselves, we're going to find enemies as well. So we got to be very mindful. Jeremiah 9 and 4. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 4. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. Uh, supplant is a big word. What does that word mean? It said, we look it up for me, come on. It said, take ye heed every one to his neighbor. Watch him. That's what it said, uh, prove a friend. You got to watch people. You got to try them first to see whether or not they're really about this truth. And trust ye not in any brother. Yes, we all brothers, but guess what? I need to know what you're all about first before I can actually trust you. Are you really about this Bible? Uh, read that, David. Supplant. The definition of supplant, supersede, and replace. Synonyms. Replace supersede, displace, override, oust, usurp, overthrow, remove, topple, unseat, dis depose, dethrone, succeed. So in the in most Western I mean um, in most Caribbean countries, that's exactly what happened. Generals overthrew presidents. Because why? They're not satisfied with their position. So they supplant the person that's in power and overthrow them. That's why the scriptures say, 
the spirit got life in you, lust into envy. Because once you envy, you want somebody else's position, you're going to do everything in your power to get rid of them, to overthrow them. That's not the attribute that we're supposed to have in this truth. You understand? Um, Kumba, I'm going to ask you a question. Give him the mic. You used to play sports, right? So you know a little something about sports. Yes, sir. On a basketball team, how many players is there? At a time or on a whole team? The whole team. Uh, twelve. About twelve. And there's staff members, correct? Yes. What are some of the position of the staff members? Uh, coaches, trainers, mm -hmm. uh, general managers. Okay. What are some of the lower positions? Uh, towel boys, water boys. Okay. When the team win the championship, who gets the ring? Everybody on the team. Oh, so even the towel boy get a, get a ring? Yes, sir. The water boy get a ring? Yes, sir. It doesn't matter who's the head of the team. The purpose is we're trying to win a championship. Thank you. The whole team get a ring. You understand? But if we have um, bitter envy and strife among us, because why? Wow, we have lust within us that we want to satisfy. Well, guess what? You ain't even going to be on the team. So how would you even get a ring? Be content with where the Musa have you for the present, because you have no idea what Musa has planned for you for the future. Read that again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, and verse 4. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. Read. And they will deceive every one his neighbor, and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and worry themselves to commit iniquity. So there's certain people that only exercise iniquity. They only lie, there's no truth in them. This is why I tell you guys, you got to study, 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 study. Those, the Bible is your only defense against anyone and anything. You must know the Bible because if you don't know the Bible, like it says uh, in Matthew 24, 24, there shall arise false Christ and false prophet. How would you know false Christ or a false prophet if you're not studying the Bible? Even, even uh, Satan came to Christ with what? Scriptures. So if you don't know scriptures, how are you going to be able to defend yourself? You got to stay in this book. That's your protection for your own soul salvation. Right? Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. So once your heart is full of deceit, you're not going to know God. Because that's not a spirit that God deals with. That's a spirit that's going to be looking to destroy you. Because if I come to you in, with deceit, I'm not helping you. What is the truth? Folks, in. Um, Psalms... Psalm 119, verse 142. Read it for me. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So the laws of God is the truth. So it's very easy to understand when somebody is coming with deceit. They're going to speak their own word and not the Bible. Very simple. If you're studying, then you would know that. And then you would be protecting yourself. Uh, read. Verse 7. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them and try them. For how shall I do for the daughter of my people? So he will melt you. That's what the scripture said. When you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. So you're going to go through a lot in this body. Why? To weed out all the negative um, that's in you that you don't even know that exists. This is what your trial is for. To expose you to you. Because you got fringes on, you believe that we are the Israelites, you believe Christ is black, now you come in the congregation, but guess what? You never really know who you were in the world. This Bible is the mirror that's going to stand in front of you, and when you look through it, you're going to really see you for who you are. And when you go through your trial, if you overcome, then you get the kingdom. But don't let your trial overcome you. Because you will be melted. Because every impurity in you has to be removed in order for you to get the kingdom. So the trials only get bigger and bigger and bigger. It doesn't get easier. 
So if you stay in the Bible, you stay rooted in the Bible, when your trial comes, you're going to overcome them. But if you let the bitter root, uh, the root of bitterness enters you, you're going to get destroyed. No correction come for your destruction. Never forget that. It's to expose you to you. Because you have not known yourself yet. Read. Verse 8. Their tongue is as an arrow shot out. I, it speaketh deceit. One speaketh peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth. But in, in heart he layeth his weight. So here's a man that's walking with you every day. Be your friend. But guess what? If ever that man was to find himself in a desert with you where there's nobody around, that would be your grave. So be very careful of people. Be very mindful and try people according to scripture. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 9. <clears throat> the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So who can know your heart? Brother Lewis. Give him the mic. You and the most high? That's it. So there's no way for me to know what's in your head. And what does the most high tell me about what's in your head? Read it again. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So most high already tell me what's in your head. You may not believe it, but that's what the Bible says. You understand? The heart is deceitful above all. Who can know it? Only you and God can know what's in your head. How would I know what's in your head? By your speech. What is that? Uh, we're coming back to that. Give me Luke. Is it Luke 945? One second. Let me see. Um, is it Luke 645? What's that scripture, guys? Fuck. Yep. Luke 6, Luke 6, verse 45. We're coming back to Jeremiah. That's how I'm going to know what's in your head because I cannot split your head open and analyze your brain to know what's in your brain. There's no way for me to do that. So how am I going to know what's in your head? Read. The book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 45. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man... Out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. This is why you must read the Bible and study the Bible. Because once the man is speaking, you're going to know exactly where his heart is at. If, his, if the words that he's speaking does not go hand in hand with the Bible, he's already tell you, telling you who he is. It's the same thing for the sisters. Abund watch what people say and match it according to the Bible. Because this is the blueprint that we must follow. You understand? So, your heart is what? Howard, what is your heart? Give him the mic. Your heart is your mind. Your heart is your mind according to what scripture? Mark 7, 21. Very good. For out of the abundance of the heart proceed evil thoughts. All the wickedness comes from the mind. That's what it says, go back to Jeremiah 17 and 9. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Read. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the rain according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. So, Moses is going to repay you for every evil thought, every evil word that you ever speak. So, we got to be very careful what we choose to speak about. You understand? Because evil, Mosai does not entertain that. And there's nothing you do in secret that doesn't come in the open. They always say, if you can't say it before a man, don't say it behind him. If you can't do, if you don't want people to find out about the wickedness you're doing, then don't do wickedness. Because whatever you do on this earth is going to come out. There's nothing that you're going to bury that's going to stay buried. Period. Because the truth, what? The truth must always prevail. So we got to be very, very careful because God sees all. Give me Sirach 27 and 3. So be careful what we think about and be careful what we say. Be careful what we do. Because there's a God that sees all, that watch all. Read. 
the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 27, verse 3. Unless a man hold himself diligently in the fear of the Lord, his house shall soon be overthrown. So you got to hold yourself diligently in the fear of God. Because if you say you want to achieve something, you want to become a doctor, you must study diligently. Ain't no time to be on a basketball court playing basketball because you want to be a doctor. It's going to take you eight years. So if you're going to want to want to be diligent in this truth, you must stay in this book. You must study. Because the first step is you must be able to give an answer to everyone that asks you a question in regarding to your faith. What do you believe? Everything you say you believe, you must know the answer for it. Bar none. There's no such thing as, well, you know, my memory don't serve me well. Well, if you believe in the Sabbath, you must know why you believe in the Sabbath. Otherwise, you're just a follower. Those are the first step of studying. Hold yourself diligently. Um... Because if you don't, it's going to be easy for you to get beguiled. You understand? Give me Genesis 3 and 1. Yeah, I just want to add to that too. Because uh, what the office is saying is, when you hold yourself diligently, right, that means you're going to examine yourself, all right? So that means you're going to examine what you're in, what you're doing, all right? But when you examine yourself, you have to do it with diligence, all right? So whenever you make a self-examination, do it with diligence, and then you have the right examination, all right? Exactly. Uh, Genesis 3 and 1. The book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So the serpent came to beguile Eve, right? <laughs> Eve did not hold himself diligently. Because if she did, the serpent would never be able to beguile her. Beguile her, right? Read. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Three. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So after the serpent made that statement, if Eve was holding herself diligently in the fear of God, what would be her next answer? Kiss Kaya. The next answer would be, the Lord told me not to. That's good. Or depart from the devil, for it is written, just like Christ told him. Get your, get your behind away from me. Because God said, I'm going to die. I don't want to hear you telling me I'm not going to die. But because she already has a lust in her that she wanted to satisfy, she entertained the conversation a little bit further. And that's how you get tricked. Read. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So, she wanted to be like a god, because Adam was a god. That lust in her provoked her to sin. So, everything starts from within you, first before it spreads out. So you always got to check yourself. Don't point fingers at others, but it's always with you first. Fix yourself, then you can help somebody fix themselves. Go to um, Sirach 25, 24. Sirach chapter 25, verse 24. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, verse 24. Of the women came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. So the beginning of sin came through the woman, and through her we all die. So which means if you continue in this day and age, giving heed to what your wife has to say, or what your mom has to say, or what your auntie has to say, you're going to be defiled, and you're going to die. Because Adam gave heed to what his woman said, right? Because of that, he died. So that the, whatsoever was written aforetime was written for our learning. So we must take a, um, a life lesson from what happened between Adam and Eve and protect ourselves. This is why it was written in Micah, keep the door of thy mouth from her that lieth in your bosom. 
pillow talk, refrain from it, from one ear out the other. Because those pillow talks are going to destroy you in this truth. Um, give me verse 13 and, and, and shout out 25. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 13. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart, and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. So, give me any plague, give me any disease except the disease of the heart. When a man is smitten, he's done. He's going to die quicker than if he had another sickness. Because women is very crafty. So you don't want to have that kind of a sickness. Where you can't eat, you can't sleep if you don't, if you're not with somebody. You just messed up in the game. Why? Because you trust that woman too much. You put too much love in her. Does that mean you're not supposed to love your woman? No. But don't blindly fall in love where she controls you. If she's not around, you can't even function. Where you feel like you cannot do without her. That's worse than any sickness you can have. And any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. Because when a woman decides to be wicked, ain't nobody that can compare to her. Because women take their time, they're very patient to see their plan come to life. Read that scripture again. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart, and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. Jump to verse 16. Verse 16. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. So, you see the power the wicked woman has? If you dwell with a lion, will you be alive? If you dwell with a dragon, will you be alive? They both will kill you, right? One will scorch you up and burn you, and one will tear you limb by limb. But, in the Bible it says it's better to dwell with those two beasts than to dwell with a wicked woman. Why is that? Because a woman can make you lose the kingdom. You'll be alive, but you won't have the kingdom. So it's better that you had died by the hand of a dragon or, or a lion, but you were walking in righteousness, so you know you're going to wake up in, uh, to, uh, to everlasting life. But a wicked woman, their own job is only to destroy you, period. Read it again. Verse 16, I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. Drop to 19. Verse 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. All wickedness is but little. Now there's some crazy wickedness in this world. But when a woman chooses to be wicked, there's no wickedness that can be compared to it. How many dudes that you guys probably know in the world that's in jail because of a woman. She sleep, sleep with you, sleep with your boy. Both of y'all get into a fight and she's standing by watching, laughing. You end up in jail and guess what? She's having sex with your cousin now. Now you got 25 to life. Unlucky you, you they put you in a room with Big Baba. <laughs> she don't even come visit you. Nothing in your commissary. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. So you got to be very, very, very careful who you choose to be your woman. Make sure she's about this Bible. Not just by her saying she about it. How do you know whether somebody's about this truth? We read the scripture. By what comes out of their mouth, by their actions, by their fruit, you're going to know them. So you got to be very wary of them. If you read the Willie Lynch letter, more of a number was done on our women as far as destroying them. The, script, um, the, the book says, Esau said, now we can have sound sleep because she stand as God for us. The woman was created to be the protector of Esau's world. So more of a number was done to you than to the men. Because the men, they just keep us under, but we're always ready to rise up. But the woman wants us to stay under because they worship the so-called white man. Take the female and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. Test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. If she shows any sign of resistance and submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use the bullwhip on her to extract that last bit of bitch out of her. Take care not to kill her.
for in doing so you spoil good economics. When in complete submission, she will train her offsprings in the early years to submit to labor when they become of age. Understanding is the best thing. Therefore, we shall go deeper into this area of the subject matter concerning what we have produced here in this breaking process of the female nigger. We have reversed the relationship in her natural uncivilized state. She would have a strong dependency on the uncivilized nigger male, and she would have a limited protective tendency toward her independent male offspring and would raise male offsprings to be dependent like her. Nature had provided for this type of balance. We reversed nature by burning and pulling a civilized nigger apart and bullwhipping the other to the point of death all in her presence. By her being left alone, unprotected, with the male image destroyed, the ordeal caused her to move from psychologically dependent state of, to a frozen independent state. In this frozen psychological state of independence, she will raise her male and female offspring in reversed roles. Come in a house and see, quote unquote, a black man as your head, it's very hard to see a, um, a Hispanic dude as your head because what? We are speaking niggas, right? The white man is what? The God of this earth. So, he created you to stay in God, to protect his system. So to come out of that mind frame is a very hard thing to do. This is why it's easier for the devil to get through the woman. So you got to be very, very mindful and stay in this Bible. Don't entertain wickedness. Um, you just read what verse? 19? Yes, sir. Give me 24. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. So, sin started with her, and if we keep following her, we all gonna die. This is why the Most High appointed men to be over the congregation. If it was up to the women, we'd still be in a Christian church, because they did not have a problem with it. Men rose up, uh, God rose up men to come outside and teach, so we can take our rightful place on this planet. Read. Verse 25, give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to gad abroad. So be careful if your, if your wife is always talking nonsense on the phone. Yes, you got you guys to talk regular talk, but y'all got to be always about the Bible as well. Because through regular talk, a lot of sin can come in. And don't put up with garbage. Give the water no passage. There's no time for bickering, no fighting. This is how God wants it to be. This is how it's going to be. If you have a problem with it, let's see what the next scripture says. Verse 26. If she go not as thou wouldest have her, cut her off from thy flesh, and give her a bill of divorce, and let her go. Realize it, cut her off from thy flesh. Because it's going to be painful, but it's better that you walk in the, in, in the kingdom of the God of, of heaven maimed, than for you to be whole, but yet you ain't going to make it to the kingdom. Man is the head. God is the head. Christ is second, men is third, women, and then children. That's the order. But coming from this uh, society, it's very hard for a woman to accept their role. But realize one thing though, on their job, they have no problem accepting their role. Yes sir, boss, but in the house you have a problem. You gotta check your spirit whether you're really walking in this faith because you could say you believe, but by your action, we're gonna know whether or not you believe. Give me, um. Chapter 26, verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 26, and verse 1. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be double. So the opposite of that is, if you have a virtuous woman, you're a blessed man. And the days of your life is going to be increased. Because when you're not sorry all day, every day, it prolongs your life. Because sorrow kills people. So if you have a woman that keep you sorrowful, you're going to die soon. So if you have a virtuous woman, you are blessed. Read. Verse I'll two. jump to verse 14. Verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. How is a mind well instructed? In the law, statutes, and commandment. And if she's applying those things, she's going to behave the way she's supposed to behave. Not bickering and fighting all day, yelling and screaming. She's going to be silent and loving. Right? Read. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace, and her continent mind cannot be valued. 
So a shamefaced woman, there's no, there's no value, there's nothing that has more value than that. That's what every man want. A silent, loving, and shamefaced woman with a mind well instructed that fear God. Verse 16. Verse 16. As the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife and the ordering of her house. So when a woman is happy in doing her, executing her role in ordering the house, guess what? It's just like a sunshine arising in the morning. Sunrise always look beautiful. Because she, nothing she's doing is doing is been done to bitter constraint. You not you don't have to force her. She will willingly do it and happily do it, which brings joy into your heart. You understand? Jump to verse twenty six. Verse twenty six: A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. So if you honor your husband, you're gonna be judged wise, which means you're gonna get the kingdom. Read. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly. Read that part again. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. So if you dishonor your husband, you're going to be counted ungodly. Are the ungodly going to make it to the kingdom? The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So, like it says in, um, in Revelation, we follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. Whatever the scripture says, that's what we're going to do. We are virgin to Christ because we, we, we don't let other doctrine come into our head and, and, and mess up our head. We focus solely on the scriptures. Right? Verse 3. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It's a simple thing. <coughs> Keep the commitment and the faith of Christ. Men rule their house and Christ is their head. So in the kingdom, to build a nation, we're going to need women because otherwise we're not going to have a nation. They have to bring our children. But they're going to make it to the kingdom only if we continue in the faith. So you keep the laws walking uh, according to how the Most High set it up. You don't have a problem with the order. Yes, you're going to make it to the kingdom. But at any time you have a problem with the order, you refuse for your men to be your head, you're not making it to the kingdom. I don't care how many babies you could bring forth. Because in the kingdom, there's only going to be righteous women. You're not going to be able to bark at Christ, talk back to Christ. It's not going to happen. You're going to fall in your role. And um, go to First Peter. I'm in 2 Peter 2, uh, verse 6. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah because there was much ungodliness going on in those cities, right? Read. And delivered just Lot vexed with filthy conversation of the wicked stop lot was saved because he was vexed with the filthy conversation of the world so he was living in sodom and gomorrah but he was not happy with nothing that was going on in sodom and gomorrah so because of that when destruction came god had mercy on lot right for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So God delivered Lot because every day he was not happy with the life he was living. It's the same way today in America we're not supposed to be happy with this life. Go, go to Genesis 19 verse 26. Let's see some. Genesis 19 verse 26. The book of Genesis chapter 19 and verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. So was Lot's wife vexed with the conversation of this world? Because if she was, would she turn back and look? No, right? That means she was missing something. So even though she was Lot's wife, she was not living right. In front of Lot, maybe she was living right. But once destruction came, she proved that she was not living right. What was there in the city that was so precious that the angels told you not to look back and you had to look back? 
because she was not vexed with the filthy conversation of that world. Read it again. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. So Lot's wife was not delivered when destruction came to Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's bring it to modern day, Revelation 11 and 8. Because if you think we're not reliving this world, live this life again, you got something else coming for you. Nothing is new under the sun. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. What is the name of this city? Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So this place where our dead bodies is, is uh, lie down in the street, because we are spiritually dead. We were, some of us here were spiritually dead. Well, all of us here were spiritually dead, but our brothers are still spiritually dead in the street. This place is called spiritually Sodom because what the same thing that was going in Sodom and Gomorrah is happening here. Spiritually Egypt because the same witchcraft that, that was going on in, in Egypt is happening here. So the only way you're going to be delivered from here only if you are vexed with the filthy conversation of this world. But we show you when Sodom was um, destroyed, Lot was vexed, but his wife was not. Living in the same house, worshiping the same God, but one was left behind. Why? Because their heart was still in this world. We got to rise ourselves up to a different level and literally live according to this Bible. Because if we don't, we're going to be destroyed. Read it again. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So go to 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. The so we're still living in Sodom, people. The characteristic of Sodom was homosexuality, bestiality, lesbianism. It is, it's not, that's what's happening here, right? Transgenders and all that stuff. Read. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these... Hold on. We all know, according to the scripture, this is describing a nuclear destruction. It's going to happen. Whether you believe it or not, it's going to happen. However... Knowing that this, because we've been in the truth for a little bit, most of us, we know the scriptures. We know the world's going to be destroyed with a nuclear weapon. So what kind of people we ought to be? Read that verse. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in holy conversation and godliness? So the scriptures are already telling you who you should be. Now, I don't know what's in your head. It's up to you to go examine yourself. And see, are you a person that fit the description of verse 11? A person that is in all holy conversation and godliness. Because guess what? You might not live to see Christ return. He could come for you tonight. Will you go knowing that you're all right? Don't think we all have time. Today is all you really have. So are you living today in according to what the Bible says? Am I really applying what this Bible says? Every day we must get up and apply it. Yesterday, we can't fix that. Tomorrow, if you're living in the future, you're lost already. The present is what you got. But many a time, we don't, we, don't, we don't really believe that. Because we see our grandparents in wickedness that live 100 years. We think we're going to live 100 years. We don't know when our end is going to come. Go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. The book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So, in, in the, what, what is in our presence? Right here in the congregation. Everybody is holy. Everybody is shaloming each other. We all are big, you know, nice um, body. But who are you when nobody is around you? What comes out of your mouth when nobody's around you? What kind of thought goes through your head? Is it holy and godly?
So you got to work harder when nobody's around you. Because if you don't, then that means you fake and God don't have no purpose for you. Much more in my absence. Like um, one of my coaches used to say, what you choose to do in your free time, that's what you are. Which means days that there's no practice, do you get up and practice on your own? Do you sit at home and read the Bible on your own? Do you call sisters, do you call brothers and talk godly talk? Much more in my absence. Because salvation is personal. You must work on your own self. Go to Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 20. Because the thing you have to understand is, I cannot save you, you cannot save me. The purpose of the body is to keep each other in check. Because we cannot do this walk on our own. But I cannot save you. Read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14 and verse 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. So the, Noah, Daniel, and Job, they were righteous men. The scriptures say they cannot, they could not deliver anyone. You understand? Could not. So you cannot save your son, you cannot save your wife, you cannot save mama, you cannot save anybody but yourself. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.